Brought to you by PrayLatin.com, makers of prayer cards featuring complete English phonetic renderings of Latin pronunciations. After Traditionus Custodis was released, many people wondered what Benedict XVI knew about it and what he thought. Well, we now know what he thought of it according to trustworthy sources with extensive ties to the Roman Curia, and we've gotten some reassurances from the bishop that I think is the best bishop in the regular hierarchy that Francis's efforts to end tradition in the church are going to fail spectacularly. So if you're looking for some good news, I think I can provide you some for once. So let's dive in. You've probably heard the story about Francis lying about why he was suppressing the Latin Mass, ending it by a death of a thousand cuts. But if not, let's go over the basics rather quickly. Francis, when issuing Traditionis Custodis this past July, told the world that he was responding to the requests of the bishops of the world, who had responded rather negatively to an alleged survey that was allegedly sent to all the bishops of the world. That survey asked them what they thought of Samorum Pontificum, and the effect it was having in the church and in their dioceses, what the fruits of it were, and if there were people with a disordered attachment to the Roman rite of mass. You know, that sort of thing. Francis issued Traditionis Custodis and an accompanying letter with it, both of which I have recorded, if you want to hear them. And in those, he explained that his reasoning for ending the Mass was because the bishops reported negative and schismatic effects of having the Roman Rite of Mass available under Samorum Pontificum. After a week or two of the release of Traditionis Custodis, one cardinal reported that some of the American and European bishops during Ad Limina visits with Francis, those are sort of one-on-one -on -one and group visits be between the bishops and Francis, they told him specifically that the meanie poopoo headed trads on the internet were saying meanie poopoo headed things about Francis and that the best thing to do would be to end the Latin Mass as a response. I'm still mystified by that reasoning, by the way. But something else happened. Many bishops in America and Europe reported that they never received any such surveys in 2019 or 2020 about the Latin Mass and its effects in their parish. I've covered this before rather extensively. But it was at that point that I knew we were being lied to in one way or another, but I just couldn't prove it. Then a week or so ago, Diane Montagna reported in The Remnant and elsewhere that the decision to end the Latin Mass was made long before any survey was released. She said that Francis lied to the world about why he was ending the Latin Mass. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm as shocked as anyone else that he, he would say such a thing, that he would lie to us, or that anyone would say such a thing about the same man that... Jimmy Martin issued on a number of occasions how he said negative things about it, but then went on and endorsed Jimmy Martin and his program rather publicly later on. But it gets better. Her claim has been independently confirmed that Francis lied. From Gloria TV, we get this, quote, Very high-ranking and extremely trustworthy sources in the Roman Curia have confirmed to Luigi Casalinini of Mason Latino that Diane Montagna's revelations about the making of Traditionis Custodis are totally exact and true down to the last detail. On the 29th of January, 2020, a plenary session of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, which has 27 members, dealt with the dissolution of the Old Rite Ecclesia Dei Commission. In the process, Curia Cardinals Perilin, Willet, and Versaldi appeared as campaigners against the Roman Mass. Other members criticized the fact that many young people attend the Old Mass. One cardinal supposedly trained in psychology said that 13,000 go on the Chartres pilgrimage and that many suffer from psychological problems. Thanks. The recommendations to Francis ignored most of the points of the discussion, calling only for the responsibility for Old Rite communities to be taken away for the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith and given to other congregations, the sacraments religious clergy, end quote. The headline for that story is, by the way, Benedict XVI shocked about Traditionis Custodis, which of course he is, and I'll get to that in a moment. The Gloria TV article goes into detail about how the survey was issued and when. That's not that important. I covered it about a year and a half ago or so if you're interested, but here's the money quote. Quote, But Montagna convicts Francis of lying. The results of the survey were not what Francis claims. Only some bishops reported negatively about the Old Mass. From the countries where the Old Mass is very widespread, France, the United States, there was a lot of feedback. Over 50% were positive, good fruits. Over 35% of the bishops said that Samorum Pontificum should remain unchanged. Another third wanted only minor changes. But liar Francis abol abolished Samorum Pontificum, citing a wish of the bishops. Montagna mentions that Benedict XVI was informed in June 2021 about the drafts of Traditionis Custodis circulating at the time and was shocked. End quote. Remember how I said that the American bishops were mostly positive or neutral and indifferent to Samorum Pontificum? But here's another thing to consider. 
Francis has never been America's biggest fan, to put it mildly. It is often hinted that he thinks the church in America could lead a schism against him, and he has said that the otherwise milquetoast U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops are too rigid for their own good. Now think about that one for a moment. The U.S. bishops being too rigid. By, your compar by comparison, your typical traditional Catholic is practically a set of a contest by comparison, and that's how out of touch he is with all of this. And which brings me to this. Diane Montagna reports that Benedict heard about drafts of Traditionis Custodis going around the Vatican in June 2021, as I just mentioned, a month before the document was issued, and that he was shocked by the revelation. I guess he was the only one shocked by it, but then again, there are numerous pictures of them smiling and being quite happy in each other's company, both decked out in papal white doing nothing but sowing confusion at the sight of two popes in Rome simultaneously. But Benedict shouldn't be shocked. As, as Bishop Athanasius said in a major interview online, Francis's worldview is entirely man-centered and materialistic in nature. There's very little, if any, sign of anything recognizably Catholic in his worldview. Again, from Gloria TV, we get this. Headline, Bishop Athanasius, Francis follows materialistic views. That's an understatement. But then again, this bishop is far more charitable than I am, to be quite honest. Quote, Francis' attacking the Roman mass reveals his man-centered ideology, which is primarily about earthly realities like the Laudato Si issue, Bishop Athanasius said in an internet interview. He called this a materialistic view, which is not the church's mission because Christ came to save from sins and redeem from eternal damnation. Unfortunately, in the decades after Vatican II, and now we have the culmination with the pontificate of Francis, it was an excessive stress on earthly realities, on man, he observed. He notices that the Mass puts the primacy on eternity, and therefore Francis rightly fears that it is hampering his secularism. End quote. And the bishop isn't exactly wrong either. The growth in the attendance of the Latin Mass was probably not the most concerning thing for the hypermodernist. It was the demand for the Latin Mass. I see all the time in the comments of my videos and elsewhere online the faithful lamenting that there isn't a Latin Mass available under two hours of driving time away from their home, and if there was, they'd make the long drive. The FSSP, the SSPX, the Institute of Christ the King, and the rest can only meet so much of the demand. And the dioceses is where the demand should have been met according to Samorum Pontificum. But the reality is that so many bishops did not permit their priests from offering the traditional liturgy as often as the laity would like, in clear violation of Samorum Pontificum. Real Samorum Pontificum has never actually been tried. But it's a moot point now, sadly. But not all of this is negative. Bishop Athanasius, in this same interview, had some harsh words about the new Mass, but then finished on a positive note. So first, here's his hard words, since most Catholics really do need to hear them. His words on the origins of the new Mass are things most Catholics won't really readily accept. I've gone over this before. A committee of literally enemies of the faith, chaired by a confirmed stonecutter named Annabali Bugnini, designed the new Mass in cafes and in committee meetings in order to make it more Protestant, with predictable theological consequences. How we pray is what we believe. Remember that. It's the rule of the faith. And the bishop agrees. Quote, Those who reformed the liturgy under the leadership of Monsignor Bugnini and others, they wanted to approach the Catholic meaning. Teaching and prayer wanted the Protestant meaning to stress more the banquet, the meal. But this is a secondary aspect. The centrality is the sacrifice on the cross. Christ did not redeem us with a meal at the Last Supper. He reminded that he redeemed us with his sacrifice on the cross. So this tendency in the new Mass to make it more like a meal style as the Protestants believe and do, and also to make the Mass more informal. The entire style of the new Mass has so many moments of informality, so many gaps where the celebrant can imp improvise and even present himself. So it is very dangerous, so the new Mass has in herself the tendency to do performance and to be anthropocentric. As an aside, anthropocentric means man-centered. This is very harmful to the faith, for the devotion and for the prayer. Man puts himself at the center, and Christ has been put aside, he stated, adding, Manifested daily in the manner of celebration of the Holy Mass, especially the Novus Ordo Mass, is really a, a man of man-centered style of life and prayer. It is this new Mass that is part of the cause of the current crisis. We have to return to give primacy to Christ at the Mass, the prelate added. From this comes the manner of behavior. Acts flow from the being. End quote. Plenty of evidence abounds for this, including the lack of belief in the real presence among the laity. His solution is to have the new Mass become the unicorn masses, the reverent Novus Ordos that everyone talks about but few have ever actually seen, especially since most of the allegedly reverent Novus Ordo Masses still have liturgical errors in them, not in keeping with Catholic theology. There's always a problem. But he does end with some words of encouragement. Quote, 
these limitations the bishop told are really short-lived. They will collapse, because the truth and the beauty of the prayer of the Church of all ages is and are so powerful and so beautiful. This is the demonstration that the Church is in the hands of God. End quote. And there he was speaking of Francis's attempts to end the Latin Mass. Many people despair these days. Many say they don't trust the hierarchy at all anymore. There are good bishops and priests in various positions of the hierarchy. Men like this bishop, and as I mentioned last week, Monsignor Bucks, and Cardinals Mueller and Brianne Mueller, and numerous others. Now, are they perfect on every issue of salience to traditional Catholics? No, not by a long shot. But they do need your prayers, because many of them say and do things more rigid than even the hyper-rigid U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops. Can't even say that without laughing. Or at least that conference of bishops that are too rigid for Paca Papa Francis, which is saying something. So let it never be said that there are no decent bishops in the hierarchy. I'll have a link to that interview in my show notes today at returntotradition.org. That's the name of this podcast or channel with a .org at the end. Look for the post of this episode title and a link will be there for you. There's no paywall for my sources, so skip the Patreon pop-up and you'll see the posts. But let me know what you think of this in the comments, please. Are you shocked that Benedict was shocked at his landmark work being erased with a stroke of a pen? I really wasn't, but maybe you have, you have some insight into that as well. Let me know that in the comments, please. And as always, please pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.